Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So, last summer I did a load of courses, eBay related courses, on a site called Skillshare. And now I've decided to migrate those courses over from that website to YouTube. So there's going to be loads of different beginner courses that are going to be coming over here uh, for you guys to view on this YouTube channel. So with that being said, the next video you're going to, uh, going to see is obviously one of those courses. Um, so yeah. Hope you enjoy. So in today's video class, I wanted to talk about how to get more views on eBay. So why would you actually want to get more views on eBay? Well, basically more views on eBay will give you more exposure to your store and overall your brand as well. So if you get more views, you will obviously get more sales, which is a byproduct of getting more views. However, Getting more views is different to getting to increasing your sales or getting more sales because it actually gives you um, a little bit of a community around your eBay store, around your social media accounts, which I'm actually going to cover in this uh, class. And then obviously it means that you can build up a reputation from that. If you are obviously being active on social media, if you're being active on your eBay store, if you built up a solid brand, then that's going to give you a higher level of reputation. And then obviously it will go on to mean that you get more sales, more re repeat custom. Um, obviously word of mouth will spread um, about your good service and about the personality and the person behind the brand. Obviously um, creating a brand and creating a personality and a person behind that brand is quite key because if there is a person and a human behind that brand then especially if it's a small eBay store um, then people are going to be more likely to buy from you especially if they have that sort of friendship or that connection that you've built up within your social media accounts uh, on your eBay platform all that sort of stuff so yeah within this course if you want to learn how to get more views on eBay then this is the course for you you've come to the right place and without further ado I shall get on with the class. So first off is self-promotion. So what do I mean by this? Well it's something that a lot of us will do already and that is actually having a presence on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the different social media platforms. I just like to say, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, because they're the kind of main ones. Obviously, we've got things like Snapchat. However, I don't feel that Snapchat lent, Snapchat actually lends itself to being a professional brand. Um, obviously, there's cer certain circumstances, maybe celebrities, things like that. But if you're running an eBay store, I don't think Snapchat or the like would be particularly the best route to go. So, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they're good ones uh, to obviously be on and promote your brand on. So generally what I would say is if you obviously want to go down the route of self-promotion and you want to promote your eBay store to obviously be able to get more exposure, create a brand and create more of a following and get more views, then you want to have a blanket uh, sort of brand among all the different social media accounts and on your eBay account. So what I mean by this is actually um, artwork and obviously profile pictures that are all matching up because if someone from your Facebook goes to your eBay and you've got a completely different name, you've got a completely different backdrop, you've got a completely different prof profile picture, they are going to think, right, is this the right person? Is this the, the, the shop I wanted to go towards? Uh, is this the shop I wanted to actually find? Um, but if you have like a sort of a blanket brand across all your social media, obviously when I say profile picture, that doesn't necessarily mean a profile picture of yourself. Um, it can actually be a, a logo or something like that. And I would actually encourage um, having a logo rather than, rather than actually a picture of yourself because it's a double-edged sword having a picture of yourself. Sometimes it can come off as sometimes it can come off as extremely professional. Other times it can come off as quite unprofessional, depending on the level of quality of the photo. But a nice logo um, really it really gives your brand um, that kind of uniformity that it needs. So obviously having a nice uniformity across all these social media platforms is key. 
And the one thing that I would encourage you not to do is just post your link on all these different social media accounts. What I mean by that is posting your link to a new uh, list on an eBay. Once you've listed an item on eBay, it will give you the option, uh, would you like to share this listing? And it will give you all the icons, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, or whatever whatever, whatever other ones there are. And um, basically, you can just click on that, and it'll, it'll come up with a little pre-filled message on Facebook or Twitter. I've just listed a new item or whatever it is, um, and then it'll give you the link to the listing that doesn't really help anyone to be honest i mean if you just do that over and over day in day out you're not going to build a following you're not going to build a strong reputation you're not going to build a community around your brand and you, you yourself aren't going to be accepted into communities because you're just trying to self-promote all the time and all the time now yes this is about self-promotion however it's about self-promotion in the correct way. So let's just take Instagram, for example. You have um, an Instagram account with your brand, with your logo, and let's say you're selling antiques. Now, I say that because I sell a lot of antiques, so it's, not, it's, it's easy to relate to myself. Um, so basically, you sell antiques, um, and you've got an Instagram account. The best way to go about it, really, is just put pictures on there of random things, not not to do with your um, eBay first off, because you want to build community around the page and you want to be accepted into the community on Instagram surrounding the topic of antiques. So just to put, put, put pictures of your favorite antiques on there first off, not anything you're selling, but your favorite antiques, and then use the hashtags appropriately. So Obviously, hashtag antiques, hashtag collectibles, hashtag um, antique collectors or something like that. Or um, if it's something to do with a TV show like Antiques Roadshow, hashtag Antiques Roadshow and things like this. And maybe you've got a, um, a piece of Bezik, so then you put hashtag Bezik. Or uh, maybe it's a Bezik dog, so then you put hashtag Bezik and then you put hashtag Bezik dog or whatever the, the, brand, the species of dog is or the, uh, yeah, the breed of dog is. So... So using hashtags effectively, what that will actually do is people will see that your picture on the uh, hashtag list and then click into it and then we will give you a follow. Now, if you've just got a photo of one of your eBay items and you've got, please check out my eBay down below, they're probably just going to click out of that. Whereas if you're providing value to them and you've got a nice picture there and you're sharing something you love, then they're going to be inspired by that. They're going to click through. They're going to give you a follow. They may even direct message you, and then you can build up a rapport there. And then once you've built the, built the page up, you may have got a few hundred followers. Maybe that's on Twitter, Instagram. Maybe you've got a few uh, likes on your Facebook page. Um, then you can start promoting a little bit more. And generally, there's like the one in five rule with social media marketing, where one in every five of your posts will be relating to... Uh, something that you're directly promoting for yourself. So in this case, it's your eBay, you know, your eBay store or a new eBay listing. So how can we actually go about promoting that in the best way? Well, the best thing to do is obviously give a really nice, clear photo of the item. And maybe if it's something like antiques, maybe put it against a nice backdrop of maybe a brick wall or maybe a, a rustic piece of wood, something like that, to give the item a bit more character. Because obviously in antiques, it, um, it you know, it's older items. So maybe a white backdrop might not be as suitable for, maybe a white backdrop might be suitable for a newer item, but an antique item, it gives it more of an appeal. So, you know, you put that on Instagram. I generally wouldn't use a filter or anything like that because that may um, hinder the look of the item. And people may think, oh, actually, I thought I was getting this item when actually there was a filter on it and it looks quite different or distorted. So you want to put on there, obviously, a, uh, you know, no filter, all that sort of stuff. And then put that picture on there and say, I've just had this lovely item uh, come in. Um, it's brilliant, I've just cleaned it up, da 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 whatever else, you know, just give it a little bit of, um, kind of talk about it as if you love it and really feed in that passion because the chances are you do love that item if you're selling it, if you're interested in antiques. Talk about it in a nice way, not as if you're just trying to promote it, like 
check out this item on the eBay store right now. That's not going to work as effective as look at this beautiful piece that I've got in. Um, it is available for sale here if you would like to view it or whatever. Or, or you can view it over here and then put a link to your eBay store. Something like that. You've got to be a bit creative about how you do it. But then, obviously, that leads people who have been following you for a while, who have been looking at all the other more valuable posts, they may be more inclined to actually click through and purchase that item through yourself, through your store, because you're obviously... Um, you know, promoting it in the right way and you're building community and you're becoming a person within that um, social media sort of niche. So you're not just trying to be a, a robot who's just promoting all of their, their items all the time. And obviously that's going to lead to more views on your eBay items um, after a lot of work and a lot of, uh, a lot of time actually talking about that, actually um, putting the effort into doing these posts to building up a page but I think I'll leave it there for social media I think I've covered that quite a lot so I will leave it there guys for that one but that is a brilliant way to increase your brand exposure to increase the exposure of your eBay store and get a lot more views over a period of time of course so the next thing I wanted to talk about is actually what eBay wants so if you do certain things eBay will um, actually send you up the search a little bit. Obviously, the eBay search engine is called Cassini, and it, it looks for certain different things. Now, it is kind of speculation on what this eBay search engine looks for in a listing, in the things that you provided, in the details that you provided to actually send you up the search results, and it's constantly evolving. However, eBay do give you best practices. eBay... Uh, have, quite clearly stated that they like fast and free postage. So obviously if you provide uh, a fast and free postage option, then that may boost your ranking in the search and then you can get more views and quite consistent views, especially if it's a product that you have multiple quantity of. So obviously that listing is going to stay there for quite a while. Um, then that's going to give you a lot more views and it's going to drive um, obviously more traffic to the other items in your store and ultimately give you more sales. So actually doing what eBay wants um, in some respect, doing the, following these best practices can be brilliant because it obviously means that eBay are going to promote that listing more, eBay are going to push it up in the search, or they may push it up in the search and you may get more views from that. Obviously there's this thing at the moment with free returns, so obviously people are accepting free returns. Now I'm not sure whether this thing, if you obviously go down the route of actually uh, enabling free returns, I'm not sure whether that's going to push you up the search or not. I'd have to read a little bit more into that. I myself haven't done that yet. I've not gone down the free returns route. I don't think it's compulsory at the moment. However, it may be in the future. I'm really not sure. Um, but... If you, obviously, if you choose to do that, obviously it's something that eBay would like to do, something that eBay is pushing, so it may very well help your views and help your sales in the longer term. So, actually doing what eBay wants is a positive thing. You can actually, as well as maybe getting yourself up the search and getting more views, um, you can actually qualify, if you're a top rated seller, you can qualify for top rated seller fee discounts if you do certain things that eBay would like you to do as well. So there are other perks, not just on views, but on fees as well. So certainly, you know, there's perks out there for doing what eBay wants you to do. But obviously, it really depends on what you would like to do. Would you like to, obviously, um, sell your items with free postage? Would you like to offer free returns? If, if the answer is no, then it might not be something you want to do. You might not want to do what eBay wants to do. And you might have to look into other ways about getting views which luckily I'm going to be talking about on this course anyway so uh, if you if this doesn't suit you this one and you don't want to do what eBay suggests you do there are other ways of getting views however it might be good just to look into it on the eBay help pages about what you know they want you to do what the things that they're looking for in a listing because obviously that may lead to more views and more sales now the other thing I wanted to talk about, and this is quite an instant one, which is quite um, different really in a way from a lot of the other things I'm talking about. Um, it's instant in the fact that you will get more views and you will get more clicks pretty much immediately. So what is this actual thing? Well, this is called 
eBay promoted listings. Now, eBay promoted listings is basically a way of you paying a set fee on top of your final value and your listing fee. Obviously, you get to choose this fee. Um, it can, I think it's anywhere from about 0.5% all the way up to 10, 20%, that sort of range. You can choose that fee and how big or small that fee is. Um, however, when that item sells, you do not get charged for clicks and you do not get charged for views. However, when that item sells, uh, you will get charged on top of your final value fee, on top of your listing fee, that extra fee that you have set in promoted listings. So it's an uh, it's pretty much a guaranteed way of getting more views and more clicks. However, there is a bit of a downside as you have to pay an extra fee. But it is kind of nice that uh, you obviously get to choose what that fee will be yourself. So if you don't want to pay a massive fee, then you can put 1%. But the likelihood is that you won't get as many views or you won't get as many sales if you put 1% as maybe 5% in promoted listings. So, you know, you do kind of have to sacrifice a little bit of the sale value um, to actually get these more views or these more clicks. But um, it is a good way and it's pretty much an instant way of getting more uh, views in particular and then which will lead on to getting more sales and maybe just getting more people into your store generally. So that is quite a good one. However, as I say, you are sacrificing um, a little bit of uh, the sale uh, there as well. Um, but yeah, if you want instant clicks, instant sort of uh, more views to attract more people to your store, then it is it is a good way of, of doing that. So I will leave this segment here, guys, and we will go on to the next. So the last couple of things I wanted to talk about are changing niches and frequent listings. So I'll uh, first start off with changing niches. So what I mean by this is let's say you are selling antiques and you are selling works of art as well. Uh, those things might be one-off items and they might not drive the same level of search volume as toys and games or electronics or video games, things like that, that are obviously more popular. Um, so you might not get as many views and ultimately as many sales. However, if you were to change your niche or if you were to just add another niche into your business, that may give you the views that you desire. Now, obviously, this isn't going to be for everyone because, you know, everyone doesn't want to change what they sell. A lot of people would like to still sell what they sell. And I totally understand that. However, if you don't have to necessarily just change completely what you sell and whip your business apart. You can actually uh, still sell the antiques and still sell the other stuff, but add in toys and games or add in electronic, uh, electronics and things like that. And that will give you the views uh, that maybe the antiques don't get. So obviously you'll get more views and ultimately more sales for selling in niches that have a, a higher search volume and search terms that are searched more often. Now, two ways you can do this, you can actually do this on your uh, main eBay account and just sell them alongside your antiques, or you could set up a completely new eBay account with a new eBay store and sell toys and electricals and stuff on that new eBay, and then you can actually have two businesses that complement each other. So you've got the slow selling antiques, and then you've got the faster selling toys and games and electronics. So these are really really fast selling however they might not be the best value maybe 10 20 30 pound items and then these over here might be slower selling but when you get a sale because of maybe high-end antiques it might be a hundred pound plus per item so although they're slower selling um and obviously you might not have to do as much work on this side with packaging um they are higher value so that's good so the two businesses complement each other because you've got a slower business um, but that's high value and you've got a faster business but that's maybe more uh, as I like to say bread and butter so the things that, that, that pay the bills essentially so you can actually do it that way and have two businesses that complement each other now whether you'll be able to keep up with that having those two eBay accounts is another story but if you're full-time at this if it's something you do for your full-time income you should be able to reasonably well and if you can't you can always just uh, Sort of dial it back a little bit. The great thing about eBay is that you can do it to any scale you would like. So it's brilliant in that sense. If, you, if you're getting a bit overwhelmed with one of your stores, you can just dial it back a little bit and wait a little bit until obviously you feel like you're in a position 
uh, where you can actually cope with all the things that you're doing. So finally, I wanted to talk about frequent listing. And I'm just going to spend a minute or two on this. It's not a really uh, big, big point. But generally, when I list frequently, when I'm adding new eBay items to my store regularly, uh, maybe five a day, 10 a day, 15 a day for quite a few days in a row, um, then I am actually getting more sales because of that. And I'm getting more views as well. So it's definitely worth just keep constantly putting those listings on because the more listings you've got out there, it makes sense. The more listings you've got out there, the more chance that someone is going to come across one of those listings. You have 10 listings out there, opposed to someone who has a thousand listings out there. It's more likely that the person with a thousand listings is going to get more sales and more views because there's more listings out there on eBay to be viewed. So, um, yeah, just keep listing. Build up your store and then you may see or I can I, I don't want to say I'm going to guarantee it because I can't guarantee it. But you will more than likely see a rise in views and a rise in sales the more you list. As long as it is good quality items that you're listing and not just random stuff that isn't really for one clean or for one, for another one, things that people actually want to buy. It has to be like certain quality, there has to be a certain quality of item. Um, but if you list quality items consistently, then you're going to get more frequent views, more views obviously, and then ultimately more sales. So I'll leave it there for this segment, guys, and that is the end of the class today. Um, so if you enjoyed it, do please give me a positive review. Check out more of my courses on my profile on Skillshare. If you do have uh, any questions or queries, you can actually get in touch on my Skillshare profile. I do have a couple of social media links on there. Um, so yeah, please do feel free to get in touch as well. I actually have a course available on my uh, profile at the moment called I believe it's uh, how to increase your eBay sales or something along those lines. And that is quite a nice follow on course from this one. So obviously you can go and view uh, that one as well. It, it lengthens, I suppose, I suppose it gives you a few different ideas that I've not discussed in this course. And this course has given you a few different ideas that I didn't discuss in that course. So they, they complement each other quite well. So I would definitely uh, highly recommend you go over and have a watch of that one if you like this sort of uh, format and this uh, course in general. And I will leave it there, guys. Thank you very much for watching today. Mm -hmm.